Today is Venture Day. So what I've got here in front of me is my HPI Venture, FJ Cruiser. This truck started out as a Venture RTR truck, and shortly after I bought it, they came out with the HPI Venture chassis builders kit. And the builders kit had a couple things that I really liked in comparison to the RTR version. So the RTR version had plastic links, whereas this one has aluminum, I believe they're aluminum, links on this. It does have beef tubes in front and rear axles that come with the builder's kit. It has CVD front drive shafts versus the universal drive shafts that the RTR came with. So it has a little bit better turning radius. And I think that's pretty much all the real differences. But those three things alone, to me, uh, it would have cost me enough to add those things to the RTR that honestly it just made sense to sell the other one and uh, buy, the RT buy the chassis kit. So what I ended up doing is I sold the original RTR complete chassis with all the factory electronics in it because I wasn't going to use any of that stuff anyway. So I sold the original chassis, I bought the builder's kit, and I kept the body. When I sold the chassis, I, I was able to keep the FJ Cruiser body. I actually sold that HPI Venture chassis with a Axial Jeep. It was the 2017, I believe. Uh, Rubicon body from my SCX-10 II that I was no longer using. So I'll give a quick rundown of what I got here and then I'm going to start a little project on it that uh, just take care of something that's been bugging me for a while. Okay, so beyond the body, let's go ahead and pull this off. And you will notice the body is magnet mounted. That's one of the first things that I did to it. it has a 2D interior here. It's just kind of sitting there at the moment. I need to mount that originally it was it was also magnet mounted but i didn't like the way it was mounted so I, I took it off so basically the the chassis kit things that are different from the original kit uh, most notably is going to be this deadlock transfer case all but positive they don't make this one anymore it is still on their website but they've been out of stock for the last couple of years at least but i was able to get one when they when they first came out before the they quit making the venture I was able to, to snag one of these. Now, the nice thing about this, it is an underdrive. So it underdrives the rear, overdrives the front. One of the things I wanted to do with this truck is I wanted it to be class two comp ready. So that was the, the overdrive was a nice feature that I really wanted to add. So as far as electronics go, I've got a Reefs 777 steering servo, a Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Expert motor. Now this is a five slot motor and I, I don't recall, I'm wanting to say it's a 13 turn, could be a 16, I'd, I'd have to look, I, I don't recall. But it's, a, it's a, uh, a five slot motor, so it has a lot smoother startup than like a 35 turn three slot motor does. The ones that usually come in these trucks. Speed controller is a Hobbywing 1080. I've got a Three Brothers Overlander <coughs> servo winch mounted here in the back. That is on a custom bracket that I built that actually was a piece for a Red Cat on axle steering servo that I built another little bracket to mount it to the frame and then just mount the servo back there and I have this piece of pipe that runs up that the winch cable runs through. This is the Poison Spider brawler bumper that comes on the 2012 Axial JK's on the original OG SCX-10's and the bumper spacing is exactly the same as the H HPI Venture so I was able to install that right on there so I just cut open a slot for the fair lead so my winch cable can come out back bumper I have not done anything with yet I'm actually going to build a metal tube bumper for it at some point but I just haven't gotten that far the original battery tray was back here and it basically took up this whole area in the back of the chassis and it just wasn't a great setup it was really tall because it actually sat up at the very top of the frame up here so if you had a big battery pack it was way up there it put a lot of weight in the back of the truck and it really didn't help it perform very well at all so one of the first things i did was i got a, a battery kit it's a 3d printed battery tray 
that comes with this chassis brace that's in here. And for the life of me, I cannot recall the name of the company that made it. But the tray basically sat down here, kind of where the servo winch is. So it was better, it was a little bit lower, but I still wasn't a big fan of it. What I ended up doing is I scrapped all that, I kept the chassis brace in there, got rid of the battery tray, and I fabricated these metal sliders. So these are, I uh, don't recall, I think they're steel, I don't recall if they're steel or aluminum, but they're just a thin sheet that I get from uh, Ace Hardware, and I just cut them and bent them. And on the one side, I used it to mount my, as an equipment tray, to mount my ESC. And over on this one, I just put a piece of Velcro. And this truck, I run on these little uh, 850 milliamp or 1350 milliamp Tattoo 3S batteries. And I just Velcro it right there. And that keeps the weight pretty evenly distributed and about as low in the chassis as I can get it, which I really like. By getting it out of the back, it, it really helped. This truck is very close to the 6040 that you're looking for on a, on a comp rig. Back here is a little light controller, and underneath the light controller is my receiver. So what I've got here is a FlySky receiver. I believe it is a, yeah, it's a six channel receiver. I shucked the original case for the receiver, which is the, the bottom one and I took conformal coating. I coated the board so it is waterproof. The same thing on the light controller, conformal coated it so all this stuff is waterproof and I just zip tied it to this little piece back here. Super lightweight, doing it that way gets rid of any extra junk you don't really need. I think the only other thing that is not factory is gonna be the shocks. The Desert Lizard shocks are very tunable there's people got pretty mixed emotions about them. Some people love them, some people hate them, but they are really smooth. I haven't had them leak and they're uh, extremely tunable. Again, they come with a whole bag of springs and pistons and things so that you can uh, tune them depending on what shock oil you're using. You can change the pistons. Um, they're, they're really great for, for comp tuning. So uh, I do have those and I have I believe 60 or 80 weight in them at the moment. I think 80 in the back, 60 in the front, but I would have to go look at my notes and confirm that. As far as wheels and tires go, these are the SSD bead locks, and I do have simulated uh, or scale hardware from Locked Up RC. Actually, no, I take that back. That is not Locked Up RC. That is SSD scale hardware. The foams in these tires are Crawler Innovations, two-stage foams in the front, and they are the Lil Nova closed cell comp cut foams in the inners. And then the outer foam on this one is a medium. And then in the back, it actually has a Proline single stage closed cell foam. And then these are the Proline high racks. And these are in the G8 compound. So they're not the super sticky Predator compound. They are the G8 compound, but they work pretty good on this truck. So uh, that's pretty much the rundown of the truck. I don't think there's really much else. The deadlock transfer case did come with these side plates right here. You can see where it says deadlock. And what that has, it has a lot of different options for installing your trailing arms. And I've pretty much got them as far forward as I can go on the top. And there's really no adjustment on the bottom because they go right to the skid. And then on this one here, you can see it kind of looks a little hokey. But what it is, is I just could not get it back far enough to where it wouldn't bind in the, uh, in the deadlock side plates. So I ended up taking a steering servo horn out of my parts box. And I used that as a little extension piece. And so the trailing arms bolted to that, so that gets my geometry correct. And this piece here is something that I, I actually had a little equipment tray mounted on at one time. I just need to take it off. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I might do that today. Anyway, what I'm doing today, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And I'll show you what I'm going to be working on. One of the things that has always really annoyed me is when I watch uh, videos online. You know, guys go out and make running videos of their trucks, which I think is totally cool. I like watching them. And, but a lot of the times, you know, they'll, they'll flex out and you can see all the way through the truck to the other side. And this one absolutely has that problem. You can see all the way through front and back. So my plan today is to build some wheel wells, inner wheel wells. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it the freeway. There was a company, it might be a HP, a HPI, I don't remember, but there was a company that actually made a wheel well kit for the HPI Venture. But again, you can't get it anymore. And even when they first came out, I actually tried to get one and I couldn't. But what it was was basically just a sheet of Lexan that had wheel tubs molded into it and you just cut around anything you needed to cut around and then you would paint it black. And um, that was pretty much all there was to it. And it, it cost like 25 bucks. I mean, it wasn't ridiculous, but I'm gonna do it for free. So what I'm gonna use are sandwich meat containers. So these things we go through a whole lot of great value uh, sandwich ham, Black Forest ham specifically. So I got a bunch of these containers. I save them because I use them for, for different things. They come in handy. So I grab these out of my stash and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them up and I'm gonna turn them into wheel wells, cut them, paint them, all that good thing. The Black Forest ham works really well. You could probably also use turkey or beef. I think it's really personal preference. We're gonna go with Black Forest ham today. To start off, the way this is basically going to work is the wheel well will be something like, you know, I'll basically cut these in half and then the wheel well will bolt onto the shock tower and then we'll just trim it out to fit underneath the body. So all I'm going to need to do this project, I got two pairs of Lexan scissors. So I got a curved pair, I've got a straight pair, I've got my Lexan uh, well, I can't think of what's called reamer, but Lexan reamer. So you can punch holes and, and ream them where you're going to mount it. And then I do have this little bag of screws that I got out of my parts bin. And what those are for is I'm going to use one of the shock bolts to attach it. And then I'm going to use the other hole in the shock tower to put a second screw so that the wheel wells don't flop around. And so I'm going to also need my, uh, I think it's a 2.5 millimeter driver. And that pr should pretty much be everything I need to do this project. To get started, I'm just going to rough cut the tubs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kind of in the middle and I'm just going to cut it in half. So once I've got it cut in half, I'm going to go around and just cut this little lip off here. Okay, so now that I've got the wheel wells cut, I think we'll probably start on the front here. And what I do is I just try to get kind of a feel for where I want to sit. So I pretty much need to have it as low as I can on those shock towers or else it'll hit the underneath side of the body. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to go ahead, remove the shocks, and I'm going to start with my mounting holes and then I'll just trim it up from there. So basically, I'm just gonna eyeball that. It's gonna sit about like that. Poke one mounting hole right there. And then I'm gonna poke a mounting hole right there. And then I'm gonna screw the shock back on. it in there all right so the shock screw goes in the back hole and i'm not going to screw it in all the way because again we're we're going to be taking it on and off a couple times but what i think i want to do is i need to get a sharpie i'm gonna go grab a sharpie but what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically trace along this frame rail right here with the sharpie and that way i know where i want to cut to give it the, because um, I, I want as much coverage as I can get to keep from flinging crap up into the inside of the chassis. So I'm going to go grab a Sharpie and I will be right back. Now that I got these cut out, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the front. And I'm just going to go ahead and poke out my hole for my shock mount right there. Ream 
that out a little bit. And I'm just going to put the screw in there. I'm not going to reattach the shock at the moment. I'm just going to put the screw in there to hold it in place. And then I can make my second, mark my second mounting hole. Ream that one out. All right, so now I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to go along just like we did in the first one. And I'm just going to mark, I go kind of in the middle of the frame rail. I don't want it hanging down below it necessarily. So I just kind of go along the middle of the frame rail, mark it. And then we'll take it back off and cut it. dry fit here and that looks real good so now I got to do I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back in and then we'll throw the body on and see how far we need to trim the outside edge I'll start there and what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna start wide at the back and then kind of narrow up what I'm cutting as I go forward. And I think it'll better match the body line. I like the way that looks. Just gonna round this edge. Make it look finished. Let's do a final test fit. Yeah, that actually fits real nice. Okay. It's kind of hard to get it to show up on the camera here, but once they're black, I get them painted black, you'll see how good they look. They're not really hanging down any. It looks like it's hanging down, but it's really not. It's just a camera angle. But again, that'll keep you from being able to see all the inner workings of the truck and make it look real nice if you do any running videos or whatever. And another thing I was thinking about for doing a uh, reason for doing this is like I said at the beginning, I did kind of build this with the intention of using it for scale two or for class two cops. And you do get scale points for inner wheel wells. I believe you get two points per pair or maybe it's one point per pair. I don't remember. I'd have to look at the, the Sorka rules, but if you do comps, you know, this is not exactly what you would consider a pointed out truck, but there are certain, you know, anything I can do to help if I do use it for comp is, is going to be good. You know, the 2D interior is worth some kind of points. The transfer case is worth points. Inner wheel wells are worth points. Functional winch is worth points. So, um, uh, I've got, you know, I think the scale brake rotors count as non-functional scale points. I'd have to look into that, but yeah, at least I get some some scale points if I do use it for that purpose. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side, and I'm going to take them. I don't think I'm going to record that because I'm sure this is pretty boring at this point. You get the idea. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the other side, and then I'm going to take them out and paint them. All right, I'm back. And it's actually a couple days later, but I've gone ahead and I've got the fender wells painted and I've went ahead and reinstalled them back onto the chassis. What I ended up doing was taking the fender liners and scuffing them up real well with the Scotch-Brite pad. And the reason I did that was on the outside, that gives the paint something to, to tooth into, to stick to better. And then on the inside, I just wanted it to look used and weathered. I don't want it to be glossy. So normally, when you use a paint designed for Lexan RC bodies, what you'll end up with is painting on the inside of the body, 
which would normally give the outside, which would actually be the inside of our wheel wells, a real shiny finish, and you would have a matte finish on the inside of the body. A whole lot like what you see right here, the Tamiya paint that I normally use, if you paint it on the outside of a Lexan body, you end up with a matte finish like this, rather than a glossy finish like this gray, which is actually painted on the inside of the body. And as you can see in here, like this white, for instance, it's a real matte finish in here, but it's glossy on top. So what happened was I ran out of the Tamiya paint that I thought I had, and I had to run down to my local hobby store, and the paint they had was made by Duratrax. I got a completely different effect with the Duratrax paint than I normally get with the Tamiya paint. So that being said, I would not use the Duratrax paint again. This is not really what I expected, but it's going to work just fine, and it, it looks pretty good. But what was really weird about it is that I ended up with a super glossy finish on the painted side of the wheel wells, which would normally be very matte. So I'm actually glad that I didn't paint both sides because originally I was going to paint both sides so it would be matte on both sides and anywhere where it got chipped off in here you might have a little shiny spot here or there make it look you know even more used and weathered. But now that I see it and see what this paint did I'm really glad I didn't do that. So what I ended up with was a sort of a semi satin finish in there. It's not really glossy because I did scratch it up but it's uh, not really matte out here either, which doesn't really matter because you won't see any of this. But that's what we ended up with, and you can see they fit real nice. I'm actually really happy with the way they turned out, the way they fit back on the truck. So with the body back on, you can see looking through those wheel wells, when it flexes out, you don't see wires and motors and servos and all kinds of things you wouldn't see on a real truck. Pretty much hides everything. You can't look up through the wheel well and see the roof of the truck. That's one thing that drives me crazy. When you look through here before, if you look through this back wheel well, you can see straight up and you can see the white roof of the truck. I actually plan to eventually paint the inside of this truck body black just because I don't like seeing through the side windows and seeing that white roof. Again, on a real truck, that roof wouldn't be white. It'd probably be you know, gray or black or whatever color the interior is. That's something I'll take care of one day. But for now, I'm real happy with the way that turned out. And I did say at the beginning that this was a free project. However, since I did have to go buy paint, which I didn't plan on doing, it's actually more like a $6 project. That being said, it's still a very close to free project that in my mind pays a huge dividend in the final project. So hopefully somebody can uh, get a little something out of that. I'm not the first person to do this. I didn't make it up. And you know, I'm sure I, I got that from somebody else years ago, um, but I know that uh, there's probably people out there that have never seen that or never thought about it, and so hopefully if it helps anybody, uh, it's a good thing. So I appreciate you coming by, and I will see you next time.